Welcome to the OHD Quanta Check How To video. My name is Luke Allen, president of OHD. We thank you for your time and the opportunity uh, with you working with us on this product. So if you're in, if you're trialing the product or you've actually purchased the product, we hope this how-to video will give you a broad stroke across the different uses of the Quanta Check and how we connect a different mask and some troubleshooting. First, it's important to understand the technology behind the Quanta Check. Um, it's, this is not a fit test system. This is a fit check system, whether it's user seal checks or fit checks before you're going into a situation. That's what this device was designed to do. Now, the device uses pressure decay technology or what we call fit check technology. The way that will work is we'll connect to a respirator. We'll have the person pull a pressure against the mask just like a normal user seal check. And then the quanta check will jump into what it does well, and that is to measure that pressure decay at a high level of accuracy and then give you a result, pass or fail, green or red light, or even information through an app, which we'll look at in a second. So that's how the technology works. It uses a proprietary algorithm to measure that leak and then give you the results back on that specific donning of the respirator or the way that you're gonna wear it. Um, but again, it's not a fit test, it's a fit check device. One thing on troubleshooting here, which I'll get to a little bit later as well, most of your troubleshooting with the fit check of the Quanta check is gonna be similar to a fit test. Facial hair, sizes of mask, the way that it's put on, any type of interference with the seal is all gonna cause problems for this, just like it should in a quantitative fit test uh, technology. So really quickly, there's two different ways that the system uh, works. One is in a basic method, which I'll demonstrate first, and that's in just a simple uh, green or red light, a go or a no-go type of result. Then we'll get into the way that you can use this device through Bluetooth technology, where you can use it through an app, you can use it through a PC, uh, but both of these ways are, are able to be used with the Quanta Check and through your purchase. And you can always update a basic version to Bluetooth if that's something that you end up needing in the future. So connections to mask. Um, all the connections to mask are going to be different. I have a variety of face pieces with me. The first uh, way that we've connected to respirators and mask right now is through a DIN 40 or what we also refer to as a NATO 40, depending on where you are in the world. So the reason that that's nice is that that will convert normally straight into any military type application, so CBRN mask or whatever that you have there with a NATO filter, the DIN 40 will work. But also the conversion of an SCBA mask to a DIN 40 connection allows you to use that device straight in here with a thread in. Um, there are also a number of industrial face pieces that will use a DIN 40 connection. So this is an industrial mask we have a DIN 40 connection straight into the front. Um, and then we also have a industrial mask here, same exact example. So DIN 40 straight into the front. Now, if you're using a face piece where you do not have a DIN 40 NATO threaded uh, connection, we can convert to different masks on their um, APR adapter connections. So whether it's 3M, MSA, North, whatever it might be, the way we do that is we, can, we, we close off one side with a cap, and then on the other side, we have a connection with a Quanta check that would connect just like a filter would on that dual cartridge respirator. So again, that's whether it's a full face mask or even a half mask like this 3M, uh, which is very popular, you would connect up to the adapters where the, um, or the connection points where your filter would with the Quanta check. But today's video, I'm gonna show you some of the testing through the DIN 40 uh, setup, and that's the way we'll do it. So the first testing I wanna show you is a standalone testing. But before we get into that, let's talk about what comes in your case. So when the Quanta Check arrives to your, your site, you'll basically look at opening up the device and you'll notice that there's no user manual or instructions that are in there with paper. That's because all of that is through a QR code or through our website here in the top part of the lid. Scan the code, it will take you straight to the user guide. You can download the full user manual or you can look at the quick start guide that we have straight on the website that's translated into any language that's through Google, all through this QR code or the website link there. So all of the resources are through our website, through the support side of that, not in the case itself. Then you'll have a space for your quantum check device, obviously that'll go in, and then over here to the other side, you'll have your charging cable, a lanyard, if you wanna use that to keep on connected to the device, which some people would like to do that to hook them on hooks or whatever that's in the device, and then also your light extender. 
which is very important. We'll talk about this in a minute. This extends the light from the instrument into the visible view of the mask if you're testing yourself. Uh, very important piece. So really quickly though on charging. Battery time, six to eight hours on a full charge. And when we say eight hours, that means eight hours of constant runtime. So don't think that you have to charge this daily. You don't have to leave it on the charge. You don't have to dock it. The batteries really will sustain charge for a very long period of time. So if you're doing a few fit checks a day, 10 to 20, 30, whatever it is, that's going to last, that battery life will last you for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks without having to charge up. Now, if you get to a lower battery, obviously we recommend charging it, but you don't feel, you don't, shouldn't feel the need that you have to keep it on the charge. The charging cable that comes in the case is a USB-C type uh, charging cable. You can connect that through a normal USB into your computer, or you can convert that through any converter into a wall conversion all through the cable that comes with the device. So that's a little bit about charging and the case and what comes with the instrument. Now let's jump into how you do testing with the basic version. So with the basic version, um, we, we bring the instrument out and there's a few things to get going for testing. The first thing is we just turn on our device on the side. So we have a global on off switch symbol. Uh, we touch that and then what we should see is a light rapidly flashing blue lets us know that it's calibrating and then it moves into this slowly pulsating purple. That lets us know that the device is ready for testing. If you ever have a problem with it turning on, you know, try it again there or contact us. You shouldn't have any issues with there, just a simple push on the on off switch. Now, this is where we would connect up our light extender. It just goes into the USB-C port on the side in the same way that you would connect up your charging cable. And this is important to know when you press it in, you should hear a click. That click lets you know that the device is, is connected properly to the light extender. Now, you can't pull this out. You have to disengage with the little trigger at the top. So very important for you to look at that but it pushes the light out to the light extender. So you can see that in the, in the, the view of the face piece. So that's, that's really it. Now we will connect this up to our uh, mask through a DIN 40 connection or straight into the mask if you don't need a converter. A twist in here. And it's very important to remember that you need to give this a hand tight twist. If it's not fully tight and it's loose, you're gonna fail the test because we're using a pressure decay method. The pressure decay will move out through any leak source so you make sure that's in nice and tight. Um, you don't have to overly tighten it, but just make sure it's hand tied into the device. Before I put the respirator on, let's talk about lights. So right now we have a, a constant pulsating uh, purple light that's letting us know it's ready for testing. The next two lights that you'll see during testing will be a constant purple light. So just like a user seal check, what we'll do is don the respirator the user will actually draw the pressure against the mask, just like you do in a current user seal check. And then the quanta check goes into what it does and it measures that pressure loss. So the person will put the mask on, they'll press the device, which we recommend pressing the, squeezing the device rather than pressing it against your face to help um, eliminate any type of pressing the mask in. So just nice, easy squeeze to seal the device, allows the device to be uh, airtight. Then the person will draw a pressure and hold their breath. Now it's very important that they hold their breath tight with their mouth closed, just like a user seal check, because any pressure loss from the person or from the respirator will result in a failed test if it's too much of a pressure loss. So nice easy pull, they hold their breath. After that, the, the pulsating purple light will turn to a solid purple light. The solid purple light lets you know that the test is measuring and it's in progress. At the end of that, you'll get two lights, either a green, or a red. Now the green light will be a constant green. That means the test is a pass. If you get a pulsating red light, that means it's a fail. The reason that we have a constant green and a pulsating red is for people who struggle with colors. So if you have someone that might be, might be colorblind or maybe they don't see the colors as well, that's the indicator. So a solid light is a pass, a pulsating light is a fail. The only other light that you'll need to know about during testing is what we call overbreed. So there is a very high level set overbreed on the test, but if you pull too large of a breath and you pull too much pressure on the mask, you'll get a rapidly flashing purple light. Um, if you're using the app, it will tell you over breath. And all that simply means is that you need to let go of the, the device, start again and take a shallower breath or a less of a pull on the mask. So, so those are the different lights you can see. But again, the normal purple is letting you know it's ready for test. 
we'll engage the device, pull the pressure, it will go solid purple, and then we'll get a green or a red. So with that said, let me jump into a test for a standalone. So if you're using this version without Bluetooth and standalone, this is how the, the test will operate. So what I'll do is I'll don the mask, I will do a normal seal check, and then I will show you the results um, there. So we get a green light. So there's your purple light. So that's the green light. Now, it's very important to remember that the reason we have the light extender is because you can't see the side light inside the face piece. So if you're using this as a standalone, the light extender is very important. Uh, but also, if you have someone that's watching you do the test, they can help you with the results as well. Um, and again, in a standalone mode, if you're done, you pass this off to the next person, and they would connect it straight up to their face piece or whatever they're going to be doing with it, or you'll turn it off and go from there. So that, that's a standalone test, and I'll show you a little more about fail tests when we get into the app. So for uh, app testing or software testing, Super easy. If you bought the Bluetooth mer uh, version of this product, if you purchased that, you'll download the software straight off our website. You can go to the App Store on Android, iOS, whatever. Um, search OHD QuantaCheck. Search QuantaCheck. Both of those will take you to our app. You'll download that um, the, the the app there. Once the device is on, if you have Bluetooth activated, it's now it's now activated. So all you'll do is open up your app. I'll touch this here. It will basically uh, bring me in at the bottom. You should say discoverable QuantaCheck's or discoverable uh, devices. What we'll do is we will touch that, and that will connect up to my QuantaCheck. So a couple of things on your app that you'll need to know. At the very top, it, it allows you to add users. So users can be individual people. They can be masks, whatever you want to use, and you'll want to put that person in at the time of testing so that the test that you do, the fit check you do, will be registered to them. Middle section is going to be the light synchronization with the uh, instrument itself. So right now it's flashing purple in the app. That lets you know that we're waiting for a fit check. It's in test mode, waiting for the test to be engaged. That light on the app will change during testing, as I'll show you in a second. The next uh, uh, section is the graph. One of the benefits to using the Bluetooth version is that you're able to see more information during the fit check process. So you can see the graph, you can see the pressure decay, you can get a feel for is this a major leak, is this a slight leak, or is the person holding their breath well, all of that information available here. At the bottom of your app, you'll have your navigation bar. So if I go to the middle uh, guidance on that, it takes me into previous test. So I can see every fit check I've done, it will load those in, and you can shoot those out to CSV files, however you want to do, use the data. If you have the cloud uh, software access, you can also have these push up to your cloud software to keep track of those tests uh, remotely, which takes you to the last uh, section at the bottom of your device, which is device and app settings. A couple of things that you'll want to know there while you're in the app. If you click on the device settings at the top, it gives you the device name, it gives you the uh, activation, and it also gives you the update device firmware section. That's very important because if you're using the Bluetooth version, you can simply touch update device firmware and then it takes you into checking the firmware update and it tells us we have the latest firmware on the device. So that is your, your app tutorial. For more information, you can reach out to us. We can help you with that. If you have the cloud version uh, in the future, we can set up that through your app so it's pushing into the website there. So let's show you some app testing. What I'm gonna do is, is connect the device up just like I was normally gonna do a test. I'm going to show you a good and green test which will, which will show on the graph uh, much easier in the, in the illumination here rather than doing through just a, a light. And then I'm gonna show you a failed test. We're gonna put something in the seal uh, to generate a leak so you can see that uh, through the app. And then we'll wrap up with some troubleshooting. 
So at this point, I was connect up the, the QuantaCheck device in. Again, thread this in, just a nice hand tight uh, finish at the end, and then I'll don the respirator and perform some testing. Pass. So leak source. To fail. So a couple of examples of uh, pass tests, failed tests. So you can see the, the way that the, the app allows you to see the testing results much easier, uh, a lot clearer. The graph, at, what you'll notice is we'll pull pressure down. That's the pressure pulled by the person. And then we then measure that decay uh, through the graph. So again, the lights will, will connect up. They'll be the same uh, lights that you'll get from a pass fail here. We'll, we'll pop up on the app. Uh, more information on this is on our website. Um, uh, if, you, if you have questions around different functionality of the app. So finally, let's talk a little bit of troubleshooting things and then we'll end up with more resources. So troubleshooting, as I said earlier, troubleshooting is gonna be very similar to fit testing. Facial hair, um, misproper sizing of mask, uh, items in the seal, you guys saw the, the testing earlier when I stuck something in the seal, whether it's uh, strap uh, pieces that get stuck in the seal or anything like that. Also, integrity issues. Keep in mind that fit testing is annually. Uh, fit testing with a good quantitative technology is going to be very important and is going to help you get good face pieces identified and, and also identify poorly fitting masks or poor uh, integrity face pieces. But it's only once a year. So if you're doing this type of testing every day or every shift change, you're going to see and help identify masks that might have integrity problems. So keep that in mind. And so again, you'll, you'll want to make sure you do a lot of the same uh, checks that you do when you're doing fit testing. So if you fail a test, all we would recommend doing is make sure the mask is seated properly, check your connection points, make sure the adapter is in properly, and re-engage the test. For more information on troubleshooting, uh, whether it's fit testing or fit checking, you can come to our website. We have a lot of information on that and ways that you can, you can improve your fit checks or fit tests uh, by understanding troubleshooting fully. That also brings me to more resources on our website, ohdglobal.com. You can go check out the QuantaCheck page there. You can go to our YouTube channel to watch some videos that we put in place. Any information that you have or questions you have or we don't have information around that, reach out to us. We'll be happy to help you. And we are very thankful for your partnership and look forward to you using this technology to help improve your respiratory protection program. Thank you very much.